Okay, so you guys can see we finally got the gloss coat layer on the car now. I went ahead and just sprayed it off with uh, two coats of clear testers gloss coat. Um, I also got the end railings pretty much wrapped up here. The only thing we got to do to these is put the decals on them, gloss coat them, and they are pretty much done. Uh, I did the last bit of detailing on them, which was to install the chain right there. So that looks really, really good. So all they need now is decals and they're done. Uh, moving on to the car body though, the issue that I brought up before is decals. Now the problem is there's no set of decals available for an actual C27A car or a C27. Um, so the, what we're going to have to do here is basically use a combination of decals to get the right data and everything like that. So I'm going to be using a set from Harold King, some really old chassis decals. I'm going to be using a set from Microscale, MC4325. This is for covered hoppers, but it has some correct data that we can use and the numbers uh, to do the car, the end reporting marks, stuff like that. So lastly, I have this sheet, which we're going to need a couple decals out of as well uh, to do some. So these three sheets combined, I found, are the closest you can get to getting all the correct data for the car. However, there is one decal missing, and it is the large safety crosses, these guys right here. No one makes a large safety cross, the kind that fits on these cars, so the good news is for this particular car, uh, it's so badly worn off that what I can do to represent this is take a square and paint it on the corner of the model, a white square, and then just put the little cross and then weather the hell out of it. So that'll be pretty easy and I'll show you guys how to do that later on. But anyway, again, here's the decal sheets I'll be using, 87790 and MC. 4325 for microscale and then I'm not sure again uh, the number but look for a decal set that looks like this from Harold King uh, you should be able to find that first decal I'm going to use is this guy this is a red strip and this is a uh, from microscale sheet uh, 871237 is for CEFX lease units this little red square is like a reflective patch the C27A cars use this reflective material that they had on the ends, these little red squares, and I'm going to basically use this material to model these squares of reflective uh, tape. I could use the reflective tape itself, I've done that before actually on some of the brass cars I used to own, but um, I'm not going to do the reflective tape on this one, uh, I'm just going to use the decals, keep things simple for today. Um, so what I'm going to do is basically just cut out a small section, adjust this, and I'm going to use this first. I'm going to make a fine pass like this and then we'll let that soak. So I'm going to go ahead and put on the most obvious decals here and the best way to apply decals is to use uh, Microsol, Microset. This is a common, uh, common product used for decal application. Uh, so I generally will start with this. If I have decals that are a little bit tougher to work with and I need to really get serious with them, I'll use Walther's Sulfa Set. This is a little bit more aggressive and it tacks the decals down pretty well. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the micro set. Apply just a little bit in the area. I have the Chess EC that I've taken out of the micro scale MC4325 decal set. And this is going to serve as our large chassis emblem that's on the B side of this car. So we're going to apply that and then I'm just going to use photo reference here to kind of guide me into the actual position of the decal. It's pretty much right up to the top of the orange stripe there and it's pretty close to the window and it's right past this first uh, rivet seam here. Just try to position it just right here. And then once I get that on, I can repeat the process with some microset, and I can start applying the Chessy logos from the Harold King decal set, like this. These older decals are always a little bit more fragile, so it's best to kind of be a little bit more careful with them. In particular, you definitely don't want these to break.
and then I'll just coax these all into their final positions. This side's going to be a little bit simpler, um, just because there's only one main logo and then the standard B and O lettering on the bay window. Um, I'm using the other microscale sheet now to do this decal. I'm just going to carefully take it off the sheet, guide it in place, and get it positioned. Okay, so pretty much all the decals are on at this point, you can see. Um, on the ends here, I've went ahead and installed some detail parts. For the most part, the ends are pretty much done. Um, I just added some window screens and then the final grab irons above the reflective striping. Uh, and this is on both ends, as you can see. It's a nice feature that the cars have. Uh, that's the first set of window screens I've built. I just painted the frame silver, and that's just a combination of styrene and brass mesh. I'll show you guys how to make the window screens later for the sides, but uh, for now, all the decals that we need to put on right now are on, like the Chessie System logos, the BNO logos, and then I hand painted the uh, safety cross on the side. It looks really crappy, I know, but the real one's going to be weathered to hell, so that's why I did it like this. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to go ahead and see all my decals in with some dull coat. The ends are going to get a gloss coat, so I'll have to carefully wrap all this up and then gloss coat the ends, and then the sides are going to be dull. Uh, remember that the ends are freshly repainted, so that's why I want to keep these relatively fresh looking. So I'll seal these up with the gloss first and then hit the sides up with dull coat. Um, same thing with the railings. They are done. I just got to give them a final spray of gloss coat and these are finished. And we can install them. So I'll go ahead and spray that and we'll come back. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and install the marker light on this piece now that it's finished. You can see we got the 903985 numbers on there. Everything's painted. It looks really, really good. I got the chain installed on this one as well. Everything looks spot on. The only other detail that this will get will be a coupler lift bar, but that'll come later. What we need to install right now is the red marker light. This guy right here. I've made this from a uh, styrene rod tube, actually, and then put the MV lens in there. So I'm just going to take a wire applicator with a little bit of super glue, and I'm just going to put a very, very small amount right in the center of the piece like this just a little bit though I don't want too much just a little just enough to put the part in and I'll just take the piece and center it directly on the uh, piece like that and then just apply a little bit of pressure not that much just a little bit just like that so these are the cross tracks logos. Uh, this is a combination of decals, masking, and hand painting. Uh, I just started to weather them a little bit. You can see I am starting to kind of do some of the yellow background, kind of the bleed through as the paint starts to peel. Uh, it's the same thing on this side. Obviously, these are going to get weathered to hell pretty soon, but what we need to work on next right now is doing some of these window frames. As you can see, I've already started kind of installing them. Uh, these window frames here are made from very thin pieces of styrene. I'll try to get the size in a second, but these are the window frames we've got to make. Uh, these three windows here are going to get window frames and window screens, uh, but i got to actually make those in a bit of a different way, so I'm going to kind of save those uh, towards the last uh, final step after I get all the weathering done because the screens themselves are relatively clean and I don't want to dirty them up. Same thing with windows. I'm going to do all the windows with uh, plastic glazing later, but we're going to do that as the last step. So like I said, we're going to work on the uh, window frame so far. I've already done one and it was the hard one. I went ahead and just tackled it. Uh, it's the round cornered window frame here that covers the bathroom window. I just cut that out from styrene and then cut in all the angles and then filed everything nice and smooth with the fine jeweler's file to do the uh, rounded corner so it looks really good. Um, but the window frames we need to work on are the ones on the bay windows which are for the window screens. Uh, if we look at the parts I'm going to be using, I've went ahead and made these little frames from the styrene. Very thin bits of styrene plastic that I'm using here. Uh, I got this particular size. I believe this is plastruck material. Again, I'll get the size in a second so you guys can uh, know what size of the uh, window screen or window frame material I'm using. But I went ahead and just bent in the bay window screen guards here. These are the little railings that the screens are going to be mounted on. I'll make the screens for the bay window later, and again, that'll be in the last step. But I basically made the frame here so far with this material. And again, this is very, very easy to bend. All I had to do was take this, a pair of pliers like this, and then just basically 
bend in the angle like that. Extremely simple to do. So all you got to do, if I can get the model set up properly, um, after I got the bends made, I just estimated their position. Oops. You got to kind of be careful with these parts too. I will warn you about that. Uh, they do have a tendency to kind of <laughs> fly away, if you will. Um, but all I'm going to do is kind of coax it into its final position like this just a little bit. It's mounted just underneath this window. Once I get it in the rough position, then what I'll do is I will take my wire applicator and a little bit of super glue. I have a little bit of glue on a piece of paper. I'll just put a drop. Just a drop. That's all you need. Don't put too much on. You don't need to get paint all over your new paint job. Only where you need it. Just a very, very small drop there and there. Now what you do, you just kind of guesstimate where the screen guard or the, the screen track has to be and then you just move it into that position. 